All right, in this module, we're gonna start talking about the different forms of macroscopic symmetry operations. And we're gonna start with the first, which is rotation or pure rotations. So let's move on to that. So these are characterized by a rotational axis. So we have to have a rotational axis and a rotational angle. And the convention is that counterclockwise direction is defined as positive. So we'll kind of just look at counterclockwise as positive. All right, and it's also customary to describe these rotations as in fold rotation. In the last video, you might have heard me use this terminology already. And the N represents, oops, sorry, <laughs> the angle of rotation. So uh, if you can think about the angle as alpha, then the N fold is basically defined as a complete circle, so making it back to itself, so self coincidence over n. So n equal 1 is known as the identity operation or operator. So that means that if I rotate and completely around 360, it'll go back to its original place and therefore everything has that symmetry. So this is kind of the lowest amount of symmetry that you can think about. The other extreme is n equals infinity, and this is taken as a circle, right? So it has an infinite degree uh, of uh, rotational elements. So these are our various uh, forms of uh, rotation. All right, let's start to now look at these various n-fold rotations. And so uh, like uh, I mentioned in the previous, uh, we need two things. We need a rotational axis. So in this case, I'm going to have the rotational axis. You can imagine it going into the uh, paper. So it's basically normal to the plane of the paper. So I can kind of draw a dot. And so it's coming up, right? And I'm going to rotate around that axis. And since uh, we have counterclockwise as positive, we're going to go this way. Right. Okay, so uh, and then we have the axis and then uh, we want to start to define some object, right? So I'm just going to draw that as a circle and I'm going to put a plus next to it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a, in a second, but uh, this is my object here. And so basically we want to rotate it around this axis. So um, let me go back to this plus sign. So I'm going to put that here because um, in in this case, everything that we're drawing is you know in projected on this plane of the paper, right? But we're really talking about uh, three dimensions. And so what I'm saying is that this plus object is really above the plane of the paper, right? If it had a negative sign, it'd be you know below this piece of paper. Right? So it's just a way of showing a little bit more detail in a plane that's representing something in three dimensions. So that's the idea with the, the plus sign. Um, also, sometimes you may see this as, as a spiral. Uh, that's sometimes how it's shown. But let's look now at threefold rotation. So let's imagine that we're dealing with threefold. So if I go back to my equation, Alpha was the angle, it was 360 divided by n. And so in this case, n is three, right? So that means that my rotational angle is gonna be 120 degrees or one third uh, of the way around, right? So that's 
what my object has to rotate, and it's going to do so. Um, and it's going to do so around this axis, and we are calling counterclockwise. So we're going to essentially go this direction, right? That would be counterclockwise. So if you think about um, one third of the way around, so basically we would um, so 360, and then we're dividing that into three. So that's going to be somewhere over here. And I might not draw it perfectly, but just imagine that I am. Right? So we're saying this angle is 120. So the object moves um, in uh, increments of 120. Right? And we keep doing this until we reach uh, the original position. So if we go another third, we're going to end up somewhere down here. So this is another 120. So there's the object goes right here. And if we go another 120, the object is back at the original position. So that's the, you know, that's the sort of identity. It goes back to its original position, right? So this is a view of what we're talking about with three-fold rotation. It takes three, one, two, three to get back to be self-coincident. That's what we're talking about with this type of rotation. Another way you can think about it is that if I take an object and rotate it uh, 120 degrees, it will appear the same, right? So if I take, the, imagine I take this whole thing, right? This image of this. If I rotate it for you 120 degrees, hopefully that was, <laughs> that was, let's see, let's do that again. All right. So that is the original position. So if I rotate it 120 degrees, I believe I'm somewhere around there, right? And it looks the same. And then if I do it again, it looks the same. And then I can do it one last time and it looks the same. It's easier if you actually have something to, to rotate a little bit easier, but uh, that's also another way you can think about the same um, idea. So, uh, one example is if you take a uh, die, a die uh, that you have at home. Um, there's examples of this threefold rotation in a die that you would play different board games for. All right, so I'm back. I'm, I mentioned the, the die uh, here, and this is also going to be on the quiz. So I'll have you uh, pause here and... Uh, if you can, go find a set of die and see if you can determine uh, where we would have threefold symmetry using uh, a die. One die is uh, fine, you don't have to have a set of them. But see if you can find what axis, so how you have to hold it in order to find that rotation and see if you can find where that threefold rotation is. So uh, do that, see if you can find die in your house or wherever, stealing from your Monopoly game like I did, and see if you can determine where that type of rotation is. And we'll come back and I'll show you it with these die. All right, we are back here and I'm going to show you how to uh, deal with this quiz question, which is about threefold symmetry in a die. All right, so I've got my die here and you should have played around with it and hopefully found this uh, threefold rotation. And so one thing when you're doing this, ignore the writing. So just focus on the shape uh, of this being a cube. So uh, that's the important part here. So I'm just going to kind of show you a couple of things with this. So obviously, um, if I'm just looking at one of the cube faces like this, see if I can get it in focus. So if I look at this, if I hold it in this direction, right, this is my axis of rotation so that you can see it. This kind of rotation, right? If I rotate a cube uh, about its face, then every fourth, right, it looks the same. Again, ignore the, the dots on here representing the different numbers, right? So every four, I basically have four turns or 90 degrees, right? So that's an example of fourfold rotation. So this is not what we're looking for, right? So that's one example. But if we take this cube or die 
and we kind of hold it uh, where the axis, and so the axis, since my camera is above me, so basically I'm thinking of up and down, right? If that's my rotational axis, if I hold it such that the, the diagonal, right? So basically you see, let me get down here, so that you see this point, right? That's the top, and then it's going through the other point at the bottom. So what we would call the body diagonal. So let me draw that just on this piece of paper using our unit cells that we talked about last time. Right? So basically I'm holding it along one of these body diagonals. Right? That's how I'm holding it. So you're basically uh, seeing this up here. Right? So that's how I'm holding it. Right? So if I look at it this way, again, ignoring the writing, what you'll see is you'll see distinct three lines, right? And those lines, if you think about that in two dimensions, that is 120 degrees, right? So if I rotate 120 degrees, oops, sorry, <laughs> uh, that is the same shape. If I rotate another 20, 120 degrees, same thing other than the writing, it's the same. And if I do it a third time, we're back to the original position, right? So this is this is the one of the threefold rotational axis. So basically, any of these body diagonals, if you hold it along that diagonal and rotate it, you've got that threefold symmetry, right? So those body diagonals are what you're looking for. And in the terminology that we learned in the last lecture, these are the directions that are of the form one 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 right so this right here is a one 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 uh, or a one 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 family in cubic right so there's multiple directions uh, on this die that you can hold it and have one of those body diagonals and it has that type of rotation right so that's important so that's what we mean by the threefold rotation in these cubes and as we're going to find out a little bit later that threefold rotation in these cubic structures is really important part of the symmetry of cubic systems. All right, we just talked about threefold rotation, and I'm also going to kind of just quickly go through two, four, and six as well, just as a sort of examples of this. But I do want to come back to uh, the rotational axis. So when we're drawing this, and you know, you saw a similar drawing of threefold. Uh, like this, but I replaced the rotational axis, which is again uh, down into the paper and up, you know, that's my rotational axis. I replaced that with a drawing of a triangle. So a drawing of a triangle uh, refers to threefold rotation. So it's kind of a quick hand for a shorthand for showing you that this is threefold. So it's just a shorthand. So down here, this ellipse um, is a rotation. Uh, a representation of twofold. And so when I'm dealing with twofold, um, my angle alpha is 180, right? I'm dividing 360 by two. And so it, I can draw my first point and then it's going to go 180. So that's going to put it over here and then another, and it's going to put it back here. So my uh, representation of twofold is I have the original object rotates 180. And if I rotate back another 180, it comes back in self-coincidence. Fourfold, we represent this axis as a cube. So basically the shape you kind of assume uh, is what you're dealing with. Alpha, the angle here is 90, right? If we divide it by four. And so we can think about a point here. If we rotate 90 degrees, that puts us around here, another 90 degrees right so this angle is 90 this angle is 180 just to clarify this is 90 another 90 and then one more and then one more up here so those are all right angles so we'd have uh, it takes us four rotations to get back in self coincidence all right Lastly, we can deal with a sixfold, and for this, I draw a hexagon. 
I draw it badly, but I draw a hexagon. <laughs> um, all right, so in this case, alpha, if we divide 360 by 6, uh, we're going to get 60 degrees. Okay. And so in this case, again, if we start with a given point, and, and this is just kind of arbitrarily chosen, uh, then each of the rotations is going to be 60 degrees. So the rotation here is 60, uh, and this another 60, another 60. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just want to make sure I've got it. They're a little different, but if you just imagine each of these rotations as 60 degrees, and it'll take me one, two, three, four, five, six, so sixfold to get back to the original point, which is up here. Right? So that's the idea uh, of these different diagrams showing these rotational um, axes. And we're just starting with an, uh, an arbitrary point, and then we can also put the pluses again. And each time I rotate, I'm not affecting whether this object is above or below the plane. So it's always going to maintain that plus sign in these cases.